right, so what I want to do really briefly is because uh, we thought it would be interesting to have those conversations with people who are more or less similarly aged to ourselves. Um, but I would love to have a representative from each of the three groups very, very briefly, like two sentences, um, tell us about kind of what, what happened in your conversation. So we'll start with the um, folks who were most aware of what was going on in the decade. Uh, and that would be our, our, our older group. So if somebody from that group would, uh, would be willing to stand up and share in one or two sentences uh, what your conversation was about. Okay. Uh, well, a lot of that had to do with the segregation of schools and what was going on, some of the um, riots that took place after um, the death of Martin Luther King, and um, what else did we talk about? Downtown civil, civil rights demonstrations and so forth. Were a bunch of y'all in that group from Richmond? Yeah, well, I would say about a third of us, maybe, are yeah. from Richmond. Yeah. We need yeah. to get here for everybody. Yeah, because some people. Right. Yeah, we did have to have, make this short because you know we don't have all the time in the world. But. And because some people had not been from around here, they felt like they didn't want their time. Like they, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right, how about uh, my group? I mean, the the, uh, the 60s and 70s. Where were you? What, what did y'all talk about? <laughs> well, there weren't very many. Well, there weren't many who were born in the 60s, and mostly afterwards, and, and only a few from Richmond. Uh, I think there was how many? Uh, one from Richmond, I think, in the entire group. Okay. Uh, I mean, well, he's from the city, and there's some others from the city. But so it was a kind of an out of town group and, and, and older in that 20 year time frame. Okay. And uh, we really didn't get down to the folks who were born after 1960. The conversation was on several of us who were from the in the 60s. I said, the 60s folks dominated. <laughs> <laughs> the concept, yeah. <laughs> that's right, that's right. We can talk about generational dynamics another time. Uh, and thank you. And then the, uh, the young folks. 80s and 90s and beyond. Who wants to represent? Y'all have a big group. We uh, basically focused a lot on the sit-ins that happened and, uh, with the Paul Armors and then also that a lot of history we don't know about. And, um, in some degrees, uh, people don't talk about it as much, so we have to learn it from stories that we just come across. Um, it's not history that's really uh, really displayed in Richmond. And, uh, so we just kind of focused on some of the things that have to do with civil rights and uh, the significance of what Tom Hunters did and the fact that we don't know a lot about it. A lot of it is very significant and we just don't know. Great. Well, hopefully we can um, fill in some of the gaps for those of us 70s and, uh, and later um, with this, as well as tap into the wisdom that's in this group um, about what was important happening in that decade. I want to do a real quick um, fun Four question quiz. <laughs> See what you know about the 60s in Richmond. This is with your clicker, so if you don't have one already, please get one out. There will be prizes for the winner. In case of a tie, you will randomly select the top six. So if there's more than six people who get all four questions right, um, it'll, uh, it'll like, yes, drawing. Can you, can you get another one? Yeah. I thought you meant for you. No, what are you trying to do here? Thank you, Matt. It's two different ways. Anybody else need one? We have plenty of extras. Okay, so every question is worth 100 points. Your maximum total possible is 400. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, who was the first female mayor of Richmond? <laughs> one, Lynn Eleanor P. Shepard. Two, Francis Lewis. Three, Nancy Langhorn Astor. Or four, Elizabeth Van Loo. <laughs> There's no penalties for wrong answers. It's not going to have to do anything. But if you don't vote, you can't win. So you may as well guess. All right. So the first female mayor of Richmond, 47% of y'all got the right answer. That's the, uh, the green one. That's Eleanor P. Shepard, who was elected uh, mayor in 1960. 1960. Uh, which Richmond public school was the first to be integrated in 1960? Was it John Marshall, Maggie Walker, Chandler Junior High, or JFK? They've done research with this technology that shows the longer you take to answer the question, the less likely you are to be getting it right. So those of y'all who haven't figured it out yet, you may as well just guess. Correct answer, most of y'all got wrong, is uh, Chandler. Chandler. Yay! Uh, and it is totally okay to cheer for yourself. You got it right. Encourage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what two schools were 
emerged in 1968 to create UCU. So one is uh, Medical College of Virginia and John Tyler Community College. Two, the Richmond Professional Institute and the Medical College of Virginia. Three, RPI and William & Mary. Or four, RPI and the Richmond School of Social Work. <coughs> If you press the wrong one, it doesn't matter. It only records your last vote. So, vote as many times as you want. Only records your last one. Oh, 66. We got some new players. 67. I'm going to get 63 before. All right, so 87 percent of y'all got that right. The correct answer is RPI and MCV. All right, last question. Last question is, uh, students from which Richmond Area University marched on the local Woolworths in February of 1960 to demand integrated restaurants and public facilities? Was it VCU, U of R, Virginia Union, or Virginia State? <laughs> All right, 67. Close voting and see that... 84% of y'all got it right. It was, in fact, Virginia Union University. <laughs> All right, so our winners. If you, uh, if you pull the, the keypad out of the back, uh, on the back you'll see uh, a barcode. Some of you might have a business card in the, in the way. You have to pull it out. Uh, if one of your barcodes is these, that got 400 right, uh, we have prizes that Dominic is going to hand out to you, which are, tell them what they want, Dominic. <laughs> Tour passes or, or, or one free walking tour or general admission. Well, like, I really need one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your hand up while Dominic's passing out. And then we can also see the team scores. So uh, the 30s or earlier was the winning team, um, followed by the 40s, followed by the 90s or later, came in third place. So well done to uh, the youngest group in here. The uh, 50s, no, the 80s. 80s, y'all came in last, sorry. And the 50s, y'all didn't do so well either. We're uh, next to last. So, uh, I'm going um, to hand the program back over to Bill. <laughs> who's going to talk about some of the images um, that they discovered in their collection that are important in the 60s. Um, actually, it's been a pretty revealing our conversation thus far because it actually says how much we are obsessed with certain periods in Richmond's history and are ignoring others. And so that, in fact, there is this opportunity both to push back beyond the Civil War and ahead uh, into the 20th century. I think that these questions and this conversation tonight really remind, should remind all of us that do history for a living, that we have a lot of work to do when it comes to working on today. So one of the things that we, we uh, did is this summer had an intern who went into our collections and pulled the music that you heard coming in, music from the 60s, and her personal selection, this is not in any way exhaustive for a comprehensive history, but these are photographs from this collection, from the Times Dispatch collection, uh, that we pull. And I'll just give you the quick, quick, because I know we want to hear Dr. James. Believe it or not, the slide you're looking at is not a railroad bridge today, but is actually a Canal Street between 10th between 11th and 12th Street. That building on the right uh, is actually being converted to apartments. Yes. Yeah. Um, what dominated this period was lots of planning. And, and in fact, what we see are efforts to re redevelop many, many neighborhoods. Uh, redevelop meaning uh, demolish. <laughs> Uh, to the things that we remember today, this is the, the Christmas parade on Broad Street, 1969. Uh, but what we thought there was also a celebration we've forgotten. There was the National Tobacco Festival, which was actually, yeah, absolutely. It became, when, it, when we couldn't talk about tobacco, it became the Harvest Festival. Um, but we have the royal robes for the Tobacco Queen in our collection. Uh, but it was a statewide holiday. Wow. <laughs> to Broad Street at night, this is 1968. 
Uh, this is April 1968, and this is a gathering on the Virginia State Capitol uh, during the riots following the assassination of Martin Luther King. Two volunteers for Senator McCarthy working to get signatures on a petition in support of the presidential nominee Humphrey, 1968. Students walk in a civil rights protest while two policemen watch over them, December 1969. We're not sure of the, the location on this photograph, um, but it's part of an organization called the Central Richmond Community Council uh, looking at sanitation and health conditions in Richmond's neighborhoods. It is, I think, it's right up there back over there. It is, it's right there on Marshall. Right? That's what yeah. Um, but don't forget there was another world in Richmond. This is these are the, this is two couples dancing at the 20th anniversary of the 20 Cotillion. The 20 Cotillion is a small dance club consisting of 20 couples. And this is January 1967. This is Jackson Ward, an alley in Jackson Ward. Uh, and again, what we see during this period is lots of attempts of uh, for urban renewal, both in Carver and Fulton and a variety of other places. Yes, we still needed a new Coliseum. This was groundbreaking. This was Dr. This was Mayor Crow, who was the mayor and a past honoree um, of the humanitarian award. And this is he's got that great sign, your city, tax dollars yes, yes. at work. They're building the Coliseum for 15 million. The new one is 180 million, I guess. <laughs> Um, work was very different. So here you have, um, this is inside the Times Dispatch office. Um, the guy's got a desk. The woman, not so much. She's working. Um, the newest building, the newest building on the VCU campus was a new dorm. Rhodes Hall uh, opened in September 1968. <laughs> Richmond Ballet. 1966. I think we made a little bit of progress there. <laughs> um, this is a 1960 protest in front of Tallheimers. Where was Tallheimers? Where, where was Tallheimers on Broadway? Where the? It is, it, is, it is an empty block. It is where the ice skating rink was. <laughs> okay. Again, that's how much has been lost and how much has been lost so quickly. Um, and of course, you can't have the 60s without a happening. And this is in Monroe Park. And if you start, if you attend all five of these, you'll notice that Monroe Park becomes the central gathering place for Richmond over the five decades. And you can't talk about the 60s without talking about uh, the centennial of the Civil War. And I just, other than those folks that were born in the 50s and 60s, where was this building? It was three blocks this way. It's um, it was only recently <coughs> demolished. It's a student center for the Lark campus. Yeah. The Lark is where the Lark building, where the Lark building is today. This building was just demolished. One of Ed Ayers' favorite photographs, and then we'll stop, is a photograph of when the building was when you walked in the building. There was a guy. Suspended from the ceiling in a space suit. <laughs> Pretty, I mean, yeah. and it had a, and the guy was holding a big Confederate flag. It was Confederates in space. <laughs> um, so that, to me, that's the 1960s broad. <laughs> So we want to do one last thing before we um, hear from Dr. James, and that is what Bill comes to at the beginning. We're going to ask you all, now that we've kind of primed you a little bit with some conversations about the 60s, some images, some music from the 60s, we want you to look at the, the current tourism map and take a look at what's missing um, and what should be on there that isn't. Everybody agrees that this map is incomplete. Um, we're going to have some folks start handing them out now. Um, so 60s or otherwise, you don't have to limit yourself for this point to what needs to be on there from the 60s. Um, but we want you to look at that and think about 
what should be on there. And uh, Cara's going to hand out some index cards. I well, want you to, again, write down on the index card some input for us. Just for downtown. Yes, just on the downtown side. Thank you, Bill. Just on the downtown side. What we want you to answer is, on the front of your index card, what's missing from this map? What should be on here that isn't? And on the back, what is your must-see list for Richmond sites, right? What, what do you take when your out-of-town visitors come, when your parents come, when whoever, when your grandchildren come? What is on your must-see list for Richmond? So on the front of your index card, what's missing from the map? On the back, just what's your top list of things that people need to see? Yeah. Are they on the map or not? Missing. The must-see could be things that are on the map. They're getting a car. They're getting a car. Good. How are you? What's our limit on the number of us? There's just the downtown side. The side that has the capital on it.